Lord, you reign on this earth. Hallelujah. Lord, will you reign? Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Lord, you reign. You reign. Lord, you reign in our lives. Lord, that you reign in our families, in this church. Lord, on our job. Lord, that you reign and we allow you to reign. Lord, we'll speak it forth. Lord, it doesn't matter what atmosphere, who we're around, believers, unbelievers. Lord, Lord, that you reign. And Lord, thank you, Father, that you inhabit the praises of your people. And Lord, that you inhabit those tonight. And Lord, that you're bringing change. You're bringing deliverance. Lord, you're bringing wholeness. You're bringing prosperity, healing. Lord, whatever thing we desire. Lord, thank you. Lord, religion tells us not to bother you. Not to come forward with those things that we desire things that we're believing you for. But Father, we thank you, Lord, that we enter in to your promises by faith. And Lord, that we see great things happen. Father, thank you for your word. Hallelujah. 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 Lord, we'll cry out to you. Lord, we don't want the rocks to out praise you. Lord, you said that you would raise up rocks. If you couldn't find someone to praise you, Lord, that even the rocks would cry out. But Father, I thank you, Lord, in this church, in our families, in our lives, Lord, that we'll cry out to you, Lord. Lord, we will not let a rock out worship us. Lord, we'll worship you. We'll worship you everywhere, at any time. It doesn't matter. We'll worship you because we know when we worship you, Lord, when it's a lifestyle and our lives are worshiping you and following you, Lord, Lord, that great things happen. Oh, hallelujah. You inhabit your pra- the praises of you people. Lord, you inhabit them. Lord, you don't just visit them. You inhabit the praises. You inhabit. You stay there. Lord, we'll praise you in the midnight hours. Lord, we'll praise you early in the morning. We'll praise you at noontime. We'll praise you in the afternoon. Lord, we'll praise you in the evening. Lord, we'll praise you everywhere we go. Lord, we'll thank, be thankful. Lord, thank you. Hallelujah. And Lord, we present our bodies to you as a living sacrifice holy and acceptable, which is our reasonable service. As part of our worship, Lord, we present our bodies to you as a sacrifice. Lord, that you consume sacrifices. Lord, thank you for consuming us with your presence. Lord, that we're consumed. Lord, we don't want just a drip. We don't want just a little bit. Lord, we want it where the rivers are overflowing us. Lord, it's so deep that we can't walk no more. Oh, glory to God. Father started in their ankles and then their knees and then their hip. And Lord, and it got to the place that it was so high. Lord, that that river was so high that there is no way to cross over it. Lord, thank you, Father. Oh, Lord, thank you. Lord, thank you for changing us. Lord, we'll praise you. Praise will wipe out the enemy. It spills them. He gets paralyzed. Just like he tries to paralyze people with fear. Lord, we'll worship and praise you. And Lord, our life will be a worship to you. And it will paralyze the enemy. He won't be able to move. And when he's finally able to move, he'll move the other direction. Glory to God. Hallelujah. Lord, thank you for what you're doing. Thank you, Father. That when people come in contact with us, Lord, that they would know that we've been with you. We've been with you. We've been with you. Lord, we've been with you. We've been around you. It's like if people are around cigarette smoke, they smell like smoke. It's all over them. It's on their clothes. Lord, when we're around you, when we hang out with you, Lord, we'll smell like you. We'll look like you. Lord, and when we breathe into a situation on people, 
Lord, we bra- breathe in the breath of God. Lord, we'll never settle for anything but you. Lord, there is nothing, there is nothing this world has to offer that can replace you, Lord. Lord, it's bankrupt, it's empty. It only, at best, is pleasurable for a season. A short span of time. But Lord, when we get around you and we start experiencing you, Lord, it'll, it'll go from glory to glory. Lord, thank you, it'll increase in our lives in the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Hallelujah. You can say hello to someone around you. Praise the living God. Praise God. Hallelujah. If you will, you can turn to 2 Corinthians 9. Praise the living God. Hallelujah. something that Jesse Duplantis said, faith insists on possessing possessions. If you didn't tune in on Friday night, I encourage you to go in and on their archives when it's po- to, to listen to that message on Friday. He had a bunch of notes and he got up there and said, I'm not speaking on any of these notes. I'm just going to speak out of the overflow. It was out of 2 Corinthians 9, 6, through 10 and it was so good and again and and that was one of the themes about really being challenged to walk in faith to to really believe God to really trust him remember I said earlier that over and over small thinking is unacceptable today it's unacceptable to God and that and that's hard in the natural to, because the enemy wants to limit us. And, and, and at times we limit ourselves and we'll limit God. But God wants us to think big. In 2 Corinthians 9, verse 6, it says, But this I say, he who sows sparingly will also reap sparingly. He who sows bountifully will also reap bountifully. That works. It'll work for a heathen. It'll work. You, you, t- you, you look at people out in the world that they, they're givers. They're, and, and you'll hear Bill Gates, you'll hear people that are big, big givers. And they continually be blessed because it works. Look at what verse 7, so let each one give as he purposes in his heart. Purpose in your heart to be a giver. You always have something to give. do He's, <laughs> don't give out of grudgingly or of necessity for God loves do you see that word loves he loves a cheerful giver a hel- that's the word where we get hilarious from did you know that it means it's a hilaros, willing, good-natured, joyfully ready. The word described a spirit of enjoyment and giving that sweeps away all restraints. The English word hilarious is a transliteration. That's literally, we just took that word and just transliterated it over into English. Now, it doesn't mean that you're always ready. You're always, you may give at times and then regret it, but don't, don't sow and regret because you'll choke the seed off. He loves a cheerful giver. The, 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 the Amplified says that God is unwilling to abandon or to do without a prompt to do it giver whose heart is in his giving. He will, he will not abandon. He will not do without. But this says he loves a cheerful giver. And God is able to make all grace man that's a lot of grace all grace abound toward you that you always having all sufficiency in all things you gotta 
believe God. You know, things. Whatsoever things you desire, when you pray, believe that you receive them, you'll have them. God wants to get past the needs, and he wants us to get into what we desire, what we would like. You might think, how? But doesn't, won't that make me greedy? No. When, when you're really walking with God, and, 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 and God says, I want, you to, I want you to be blessed. You know, Jesse Duplantis was telling a story about his daughter. And he's re- relating it to how God wants to do it for us. He was at a Disney store. And he said that's his, no, it was his granddaughter's favorite store. And he, he said, she called me grand, grandfather, very, very, you know, grandfather, very, <laughs> very proper. And he said, she just, she just touched my heart. We were at the store, and I said, I told her, you can have anything you want. He said, you could have the whole store. I'll buy the whole store right now. And he was serious. He said, I'll buy it all. He, he calls one of them, how much stock you have in this? How, how many pieces? Of, and she's like, oh, my God. You know. He said, I want to buy it all. And so he tells his grandchild, go and pick whatever you want. You can have literally everything. He kept reiterating that. And so he said, she picked four things. And she said to him, grandfather, this is hard. This is hard. You really mean I can have everything? And she kept saying, this is hard. And so she only, and he told her, so they only got four things. But he said, anytime you want to go back, it's yours. And he was relating that how that's how God is. And he really is, because if you if you look at the scripture. God is a giver. God wants to bless you exceedingly, abundantly, above all that you could ever ask or what? Think. But what happens, we, be, we, we, we look at that religiously. We put limits on God that, no, he doesn't really mean that. And wait a minute. If, if I start asking God for these things, won't things overtake my life? Do you think it will? I heard one nope and everybody's just looking. They don't know how to answer that one. Things will overtake your life if if you put them above God. Right? You put anything above God. Didn't you talk about idols on Thursday? What's an idol? What's an idol, Willie? It's a false God. It's something that a person starts worshiping, going toward, wanting. It's 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 an it's false. And what? But if you put something above God, it becomes an idol. And what happens to your relationship with God? It suffers, right? And it starts going down. But when your heart's right, when you're walking with God, God. God will do, he says, if, if you can believe, all things are possible. How many things? He, said, he says, God is able to make all grace. How much? All grace that you always having all sufficiency in all things. You may have an abundance for every good work. Now, that's it. Our natural mind flips. It, it, it has a hard time handling that. That's why God, all through Scripture, God tells us to put me first. 
Worship me. Come by me. Want me. I, you know, when the Israelites walked with God, when they really walked with God, they were blessed. Isn't that true? They left Egypt with everything. That's a pretty neat story. They left with, they left with all the goods that Egypt had. No wonder the Pharaoh was ticked off. He, can you imagine? He's like, he probably thought, what, 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 what has happened? They, they took everything. They took all our goods. They, they, wait a minute, they robbed us. No, they didn't rob them. They've been robbing God's people for 400 years. God just gave them what they, but they willingly gave it to them. And he's wait a minute, they just, they just, well, they got everything. We got to go, we're going to kill them. We're going to chase them down. Well, you know what happened? They got drowned. It's funny, God wants to do so much more for our lives than what we can, what we, than what we're wanting or we believe for. As it is written, he has dispersed abroad, he has given to the poor, his righteous and dearest for him. Now may he supply seed to the sower and bread for food, supply and multiply seed you have sown and increase the fruits of our righteousness. While you are, while you are enriched in everything, enriched in everything, I, you know, since I heard that, I just, you just start going over this. and I, Lord, help me to remove every bone of religiosity, every bone of stupidity, every bone of unbelief, of, of not reading this. And then, because many of we read this and we hear a voice of unbelief that we've heard or Wait a minute, you can't have all that, or, or you can't. How can you believe God for healing? How, how can you believe God for this? How, wait a minute, how? Wait, and, and, and you start hearing all this, these things. When God wants to do so much, that's what I'm saying. When Israel walked with God, they were blessed. They were protected. They were the envy. They, they became the envy of other nations at times. And the enemy would always try to get in to get them to start worshiping other gods. He got them, he would throw the women, he would throw the women at them. He would throw, because if they can, they start following these women, because these women were, were, were worshiping other gods, and all of a sudden they would pull the heart of the people away. The enemy wants to pull our heart away from God. It's not like I was saying this morning. I'm, I'm getting at a place where, you know what? Nothing really else is really sad. There's nothing else bad. I guess. I, I, I would want the rapture to happen yesterday. Why? So we could go and be home with it. Go home. But God's saying, wait a minute. There's still things I want to do on this earth and there's still people I want to reach I still want to show my covenant to be true in your life and to those around you so that people can come into the kingdom of God God knows when it's going to happen the father knows when he's blowing the trumpet well we haven't heard it yet so we need to continue to walk with him believe him minister to others be in a position to let God bless you truly Part of blessing is wholeness, healing. I was like this afternoon when that happened with Clara, and, and you know, you, you, you see that, and immediately, like I said, I saw that other person that had drowned in my pool because it was starting to be the same color. No, we're not going through this again. Now, that child was completely healed and whole, but we're not, no, 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 no. We are not going, you are not doing this. You are not doing this. How dare you? Oh, I got ticked off. And you know what? Okay, you want to you wanna play like that? You want to attack a little one-year-old? You want to, okay. 
Well, what, what are you going to do? You no, know you do. You just start telling people about Jesus. You start believing God to, Lord, good, send some other people in my, across my path that I can minister to, that I can lay hands on, that I can bless, that I can, that, that, that your covenant is going to flow through me and touch someone else, and it's time to pull someone else out of the, the hands of hell and stick it to the enemy and go right like that to him. That's one person you don't have to feel sorry for. He's underneath your foot. Praise and keep them there. You can put your foot around his throat. And you keep it there. And with your other foot, you can kick him in the head. You might think, man, that sounds pretty, pretty cruel. Well, when it, war is cruel. What's the object of war? To win. At all costs. Right? If you're at war... We fight, you know, that's why our nation needs prayer. We fight silly wars. We, we fight with our hands folded or with our hands tied behind our backs many times and blindfolded. Well, how are you going to win a war like that? If you're going to fight, you fight to destroy the enemy. Well, that sounds cruel. But don't, won't people, don't people get hurt and die? Well, would you rather it be you or the enemy? Well, I'd rather have it not be either. Well, amen. I, that's, amen to that. And remember, we wrestle not against flesh and blood. The battle's not even my brother or, or this person or, or that person who's not my brother because we're not all brothers and sisters. You, you know that, right? Because you have people say, oh, we're all brothers and sisters. Do you, do you know Jesus Christ? No. Well, then you're not my brother. I'm sorry. Well, how, how dare you? God created all. We're all brothers and sisters. No, we're not. Show me in the Bible where it says that. And you know what else? Does God call us children or adults? You know why? You ever think about that? And someone brought I forget who my... God called us children because children, they believe. They just trust. Ch childlike faith, he told us to believe like a child, to have faith like a child. They just trust. You know, I was looking at, at, at Clara. And she's, I mean, she's screaming. And they said, that's good that she's, she's screaming, she's fighting. But she, because we're holding her down. And she's screaming and crying. And then she just, she just look at you. And we said, oh, it's okay, Clara. We love you. It's okay. Everything's fine. And she'll look at you like, give you that look like you're the enemy too. Why are you holding me down and they're doing this stuff to me? They feel, I mean, they feel all that. And, and she would just look at you, and I, I'm not moved by that because you just want to start crying. No, 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 I'm not going there. And you just reassure, and she's just looking at you, and just, I'm talking, screaming. <laughs> Brianna said, I don't want, ever want to hear her scream like that the rest of her life. That's enough. Oh, my God, it was horrible. Just screaming. Oh, God is so good. All, all, every, every. You just, you look at this. He uses big words. Don't let those words scare you. Because we read it, we don't, we don't read it like it really reads. Or we don't think like it really reads. No wonder everybody's kept saying. And it's not them. It's the Spirit of God speaking through that, you know what? Small thinking is unacceptable now. Because we're living in times that are really troubling. And the enemy's coming against. He's, he, he's, he knows his time is, is almost over. So he's making a lot of noise. 
He's trying to rear up his ugly head. He goes around like, like, he isn't, like a roaring lion seeking whom he may devour. The Bible tells us to be steadfast in our faith. And as you give, no, God is serious about these things. Remember in Psalm where it says a, one other verse. I just thought about this. In Psalm, I think it's in Psalm 37. Well, it's not fair. It's in 35. It says, let them, verse 27, let them shout for joy and be glad who favor my righteous cause and let them say continually, let the Lord be magnified who has pleasure in the prosperity of his servant. It gives God pleasure to prosper. Well, what is it? How much? It's, how much, how much is God, how much is enough? Well, for you to meet all of your needs and to be blessed and then to help meet the needs of others. So how much is that? I don't know. <laughs> how much is that? I, it's more than what we have now. And when you have more, you'll say, well, it's more than what I have now. Are you following me? Because... There's always an opportunity to help someone. There's always an opportunity to sow. There's always an opportunity in some arena. Are you following me? Praise the Lord. Well, give, but give with no limits. In your mind, Lord, I'm receiving from you. That's not an evil thought. That's not an evil desire. To increase is God, you've been created to increase. You've been, in, you've been created to go f- further. You, we're, we're created to increase and, 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 and to go after more. That, that's not secular. That's not demonic. That's God. Are you following me? No, he, he steals he lies to get us to believe something that's so ridiculous. And then people act, they go after things without God. God says, no, you go after me and I'll bring, I'll bring these things to you. First seek his kingdom, his righteousness, all these things will be what? Added to you. There's other scripture that says he'll multiply. There's other scriptures that says exceedingly abundantly above all that you could ever ask or even think. There, there, there's different levels. But don't get caught up in being self-centered and forgetting about God himself. Amen. If you need an envelope for your giving this evening, and I need one too, you can raise your hand if you're making out a check. You can make it out of the Harvest Church of Tampa. And Andrea's leaving. She's going somewhere. And Julia, because I want you to guys to come up in a moment. Okay. Because I just want them to, just to share. I, I told them I might be doing this. I haven't talked to them. Just share with whatever has, you know, what speaker was their favorite, if there was, or what, what, what did you learn, or what was it that, that has helped you? You don't have to go to a conference to be helped. But it just helps to be in that for several days for, for you know, in the morning and then in the evening um, and just being around people. How many know who Jay Thomas is? Just the, nobody else does. He's a worshiper and he, and I'm going to talk about some, a couple of things he shared, but he was way out in the world. Did you know what he was? I mean, well, I'm going to share a little bit and just, um, and, I, and I had an opportunity to talk with him. And he's one of the most humble men. I don't know how old he is. He's, I, he can't be that old. But he's one of the most humble people I've ever met. And I thanked him. I, I thanked him for, for being a worshiper and just, 
And I, that's why I thank our team all the time because they're worshipers. They love to worship. And he loves to worship, and I thanked him. And he thanked me, and, and, and just for sharing that, and I just, just you're, I said, you have such a purity of heart. You're just, oh. and I thank, thank you for being like that. And just, and he shared from that, and I, I'll share in a little bit. But, you know, if, what I, when you've been forgiven of much, you're thankful of much. Praise the Lord. You can, you know, I never got an envelope. Can I get an envelope? Is anybody doing special music? You know what? I'll just have them testify and that'll be. It's 20 to 7 already? Huh? What in the world? I really. I just look, it was 10 to 6. No, I'm serious. Jesus, help me. All right, Andrea. Calling Andrea. Calling Andrea. <laughs> Thought maybe you left uh, the building and went out the back way. I want you and Julia to come up for a moment. Well, now that I realize I don't have much time. Well, Jay Thomas was sharing. He was, and, and he, he was just talking about worship and he's a worshiper he he he's out of uh international house of pancakes no it's ihop international house of prayer ihop it's called out of kansas city missouri and what they've been doing and I, it's been several years that they're 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 going 24 7 every day they have prayer rooms they just worship god and just it started in a double wide trailer and it just but they've been doing it for years it's just something, that Mike, is it Mike or Mark? Mike Bickle. He, he's the founder, and he just, he just felt, man, I need, I, we need to go before God, prayer and worship, 24 hours, seven days a week. And that's what they've been doing. But there's been, there's been several worshipers that, that have come out. But Jay Thomas is one of them. And I've never even heard of him until a few months ago. And we do. So we do that, and I don't, do we do any of his other songs? I got all the CDs that he had. Yeah, Shekinah Glory is his. It's not on any of his CDs that he sold. Or, but, but he was the one that said, you know, we don't want a visitation. We want, a habit, we want God to inhabit us. We don't want just a visitation because that means he's going. But we don't want him to go. He was saying... How worship is a response to when we encounter God. The more you have a God, the more you want to worship Him. It's a lifestyle. We, we've talked about that. You know that. And he was, and he said it from the pulpit. He's, he, he said, man, I was steeped in, in sin, steeped in the homosexuality. I would never know that, never have known that. But he said, he said, I, I was, I, he said, I understand that. He, but, but he was just talking about just worshiping God. And I told him, I said, I said, man, no wonder you want to worship God because you've seen the, the, the forgiveness and the freedom of, that only he can give. God has a thirst. You know, we thirst after God, but God thirsts. God has a thirst in his heart, and the only ones that can fulfill that thirst that he has is us. By worshiping him in spirit and in truth. That's what we do for God. It fulfills the thirst that he has because he created us for fellowship and, and to worship him. And so, God, here, you come up, Mike. And that's God's heart. God wants us to worship him. God, God wants, he wants you in his presence. He wants you. He wants just to be with you. And when, we, when, and when we tell God that, you know what, Lord, I, I don't trust you. I don't believe you. I don't believe what your word said. It's, and I want to say it's spitting in his face. But it's like a child saying to their parents, I don't want you. I don't, I don't need you. I don't. That's, that's hard. 
when God, God wants us more than, than we want him. I encourage you to, to seek God like never before. To really want him. Not just things. You know what? Th- things don't fulfill you. It, you know, having more money helps than having less, right? Right? It does. Let's be real. It's not religious. Oh, my God. Because you can, you can settle more issues with more money. But also, if you have the love of money, it'll lead, to the root, it, it'll lead you to the root of all. I mean, it will destroy you. The love of money is the, <laughs> that's the root of evil. I mean, it, it, but you don't, want, you don't want money if you don't have God. You might think you do. It'll, it'll kill you. But when you have God, God, will, God wants to bless you so much. And we have a hard time believing it. He's a father. Let's pray over the seed. Father, we thank you, Lord, in the name of Jesus, that this seed is blessed in the name of Jesus. Father, we thank you for 30, 60, 100-fold return, that every family, every person is debt-free. Lord, that there is no lack in this place. There is no lack in families. Lord, we thank you, Lord. We are bound to every good work in Jesus' name. Lord, that this seed would go into the ground and produce But we release this to you, Lord. Lord, because you've given to us. We give back to you. We give back for the work so that we can teach people about your word, that we can help them grow, and we can help others come into a real personal relationship with you. In Jesus' name, amen. Are you coming up? I guess you got the mic. You're ready, huh? You guess so. Well, come on up. Just now, you're going to speak into the mic. Yep. Okay. Do you need your notes? No. No. All right, I'm gonna shut it then. Okay. <laughs> um. So there was just so much stuff that was like framed in that week. Like it didn't even feel like a week. It felt like a day uh, being there. Um, but it was basically, um, well, for me, I guess just listening, um, listening more to the Holy Spirit, um, that was one of the really big things, and, um, also what, uh, Pastor John was saying about things not really meaning a whole lot. Um, this past week, I drove a red convertible BMW to the grocery store, so <laughs> that was like... <laughs> but, I mean, it just it didn't... It wasn't, it wasn't in anything. Um, and Who was your favorite speaker? I don't know names. I don't... <laughs> Um, was it a man or a woman? Probably the like one of the first like one of the first guys. Simon um, Bailey. I, I guess. <laughs> um, he talks more about like business and. That was him. Okay, yeah, he, he was really good. Um, And um, another thing that was really big was um, some a couple of different ones uh, were talking about diseases and like um, curses, genetics, um, how a lot of the um, genetics and diseases are basically that they're just curses. Um, that run in families, and like um, I know a couple of people talked about cancer, how um, the that spirit will dwell in a body until it either kills it or, and then it'll just jump onto another person. So.
Um, again, all the speakers are amazing. I learned a lot. Um, I think my favorite was Jay Thomas. Like his, who, on worship was so good because, like, I really have a heart for worship. Like, if that's one of, who, I'm going to go crazy just talking about it. But he, um, like, his perspective on worship is like just as an acknowledgement of God, like, really was, like, really, like, touched my heart about that. And um, and it was, like, more of a response to, to, to God was to worship him, to tell him how worthy he is, to tell him how much, like, he has done for you. Is, is, it's a response. It's not, like, something that you do in order to get something else. It's, like, that's, that was, like, okay, that was good. And... Um, I liked Jerry Savelle. He talked about he talked about the um, like the word awakening and what it means as um, as a response. And you have to be you have to be receptive to to the word and and respond to it, not just hear it and just do nothing and be like that was great, but you know actually respond to what what the Lord has said. And um, that. I know Andrew and I were talking about it before too. Like that's that was something that we wanted going into it. Like um, it was like I think it was the night before in the hotel. Andrew was like, "Oh, I just wanna, I wanna figure out what I wanna do. Like what I what I need to do." And then the next day, Jerry Savelle like talks about this is what like your future. You need to listen. I was like, "Oh my gosh, blessed." But um, and. Uh, and then I was talking to other people at the church, and and, um, and they were like, you know, you really need to just follow the Holy Spirit, like what what He has for you, and um, and and I've been like struggling with what I want to do, what I need to do, and and that is just like like confirmation that you know I I just need to spend more time spend more time like listening and and um, really seeking what he has for me uh, let me see what else there's there was a lot and um, April Osteen was really good too she talked about um, the diseases too and um, and she said great dreams require great responsibilities I was like that's true. And yeah, it really was deep. It really was deep. Um, and just and just like really just totally giving yourself to God, you know, like not holding anything back. And I feel like that's what I really took out of it, just complete, complete surrender and knowing that he has you no matter what. And um, so I enjoyed it. It was good. <laughs> And that he's looking for our complete surrender, not just parts of, because many times we give God a little bit, a little bit more. We, he wants it all. You know, I had an opportunity to, to share my testimony with someone at the church who, who's aspiring to be in, in full-time ministry. He's a young man, and, and I just, he asked me, he said, he just asked me where I came from or what, what, you know what? I know, I don't know you, and I, I've heard a, I've heard about you, and, and so I said, and I just felt I said I'm going to give you the long version. <laughs> and when I said long, it was long. We talked for maybe 45 minutes to an hour. In the I mean, he said, "Oh man, I got the director's cut." I mean, so so I, I and I shared and I shared things that I hadn't shared in in a long, long time, and some things I I don't know if I've ever shared. Just regarding when I gave my life to Christ and and what and just some of the things that God brought me out of and and it made me think about just what Julie was saying. 
we have this we have to give him everything because many times we still hold back a little bit just because we still don't completely trust him that he is going to do what he said that he has our best interest at heart that he will never hurt us that he'll take us beyond where we could ever go on our own or ever go walking with them halfway or three quarters way because many times and I think some of it is because we know in our own heart there are things that we need to maybe change or maybe let go of or just kind of have have a, a mind a, a mind switch or just think a little bit differently and we get comfortable, you can get comfortable in unbelief. You can get comfortable in fear. You can get comfortable in worry. You can get comfortable in, in these things because you, 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 and I don't know how to say this, but you, your, your, your being knows, it's, it knows how to operate in fear. It knows how, it can, it can almost be comfortable in fear. And I know that sounds almost crazy, but it's true because when you're really free and you're really walking with God and you're really out there, that's when it, and I remember when, and I'll give you an example and then I'll, uh, we're done. I, I, I had a lot, but I think with what happened this afternoon, it kind of changed a lot of things at the hospital this afternoon. But when I got, when I used to chew tobacco all the time, and, and you, you most, you all know that I've shared it many times. But what, when you're addicted to something, your whole life is a part of that. So when I chewed tobacco, I chewed tobacco driving my vehicle. I chewed, I chewed playing sports. I chewed tobacco going to the movies. I chewed. It was a part of me. Are, are you following me? I remember when I was lost, I'd go to, to the dance clubs and be on the dance floor. Now, that, that would be a sight to see, Lord God. <laughs> With chew in my mouth. How disgusting. So you can't spit, you know what you do? You swallow. Mm, yeah, amen. That'd make you sick, too. But what I'm saying is everything's wrapped up. When I got free and God, when I finally was serious, God delivered me in one day. But everything I did was wrapped around that. Are you following what I'm saying? So my, as I'm walking, dated, everything changed. I'm driving now. I'm not chewing. But wait a minute. I just, a day ago, I was, a few days later, I go to the movies. Wait, I used to chew. Are you following me? And so... What happens, you, you almost, if you're not careful, you almost don't even know how to exist outside of that addiction or bondage. And that's what tricks some people. Because now all of a sudden they don't know how to act. They don't know, because, because there's feelings involved, there's your, your body, the things that you're doing. And many times we do things without even thinking about it. Are you following me? So you just get in the car, I'd get in the car, get a cup, put a chew in. And so you get in the car, next thing I'm supposed to do is take a chew, but I don't need a chew, I've been delivered, so you know, now what do I do? For a little while, I didn't even think about it, but, but then all of a sudden, the enemy might bring a thought or something might come, wait a minute, I'm not chewing, or I'm not doing this, I'm not doing that, or I'm not thinking that. And if we're not careful, we'll start thinking about that just to try to make ourselves how we were before. I remember when I got saved, my language changed. I quit swearing. I used to mm, swear all the time. I remember getting cut off. And I just laughed. And I thought, this is weird. Because usually I would swear are, are you following me that's why we in order to go to new levels and be open surrender to him 
and be willing to let his glory fill us. And what it'll start doing, it'll change the way we think and it'll give us a different perspective. When we have a different perspective, we can walk in it. That's why sometimes people aren't ready to really prosper and, and really have God bless them financially because they'll kill themselves. They'll destroy themselves because their mindset, it, it, it can't handle it. That's why you see a lot of athletes, young, man. And I promise, this is it. I was at my dad's house. This was a couple of weeks ago in Illinois. And he likes to watch baseball. There's no baseball game on. And so, uh, well, I, what do you want to watch? I said, well, because he likes I said, put on ESPN. I didn't know what was on. And they had a documentary on Daryl Strawberry and Dwight Gooden. These two were the best. They led the New York Mets to the World Series, and, and I think it was in 86 they won the World Series. The only problem with these guys is they liked the party. They get into cocaine, all these things, and it ruined their careers. It ruined their lives. Dale Strawberry is now a minister. He's an ordained minister. And I was, I was watching this. It was good. It was really good. But they talked about the mindset, and, and they would, you know, different times, and, and, but they would continually fall back into it. They'd be thrown in jail. They'd come out in jail, and the first thing they'd do, they'd start snorting again, doing cocaine. And, 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 it, and it talked about the lifestyle, the mindset. It's, if, if you get an opportunity, if you like sports, now some of it's kind of raw. Some of the stuff these guys did was just, but it was, it was really interesting to hear the mindset. And, and of course, like I said, Daryl Strawberry is now an ordained minister. He gave his life to Christ. And it took time after that, and he's been, he's been free for, for, for quite a while now. But so let, let God transform you in, into a new person by changing the way you think. See, when God brings an awakening, he'll change it all. He'll change the mindset. You'll start experiencing his glory. You'll start, and all of a sudden, when, 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 you have, when, when you're ready, God will fill you as much as you want to be filled. And the more you surrender to him, the more the glory in his light shines. The more you, you let self shine, the less, it, it, the less it's bright. Are you following me? Let's pray. Father, thank you, Lord. Thank you for my brothers and sisters this evening. Lord, thank you for filling them to overflowing. Lord, thank you, Lord, for an awakening that's not just, it's not just a visitation. Lord, it's a habitation. Lord, you inhabit, you inhabit us. And Lord, that you're changing us from glory to glory. And thank God that you, we thank you that you don't leave us. Because you said you'll never leave us nor forsake us. You're there even until the end. And we thank you, Lord, that our capacity to handle you would grow so that we could handle those things that you want to bring into our lives so that we can be a light and a witness and not glorify the things and glorify this and that, but we're glorifying you, Father, and we're glorifying the Word of God, Jesus Christ. And we thank you. We thank you for this week, Lord, that we're going in the direction you're wanting us to go so we can grow in grace. And Lord, that our light would shine brighter than ever before. In Jesus' name, amen. God bless you. Have a wonderful, wonderful week. Just Hello, this is Pastor John Palladino. Thank you for listening to today's message. I believe it has been a help to you. We at Harvest Church of Tampa want to help you in your life to produce true lasting change. But true lasting change starts with a living relationship with Jesus Christ. If you do not have a relationship with him, I want to pray with you right now to receive him as your Lord and Savior. Let's pray. Lord, 
I ask you today to come into my life. Thank you for forgiving me of my sins. I confess you as my Lord and as my Savior. I believe that you died for my sins and you were raised from the dead to give me a new life. Thank you for filling me with your spirit in Jesus' name. If you prayed that, you're a family member now, and I call you brother. I call you sister in the Lord. And I want to also invite you to Harvest Church of Tampa. Our address is 2640 Cypress Ridge Boulevard, Suite 101. And it's located in Wesley Chapel, Florida, 33544. We'd love to see you here, and we'll help you walk with the Lord, and we'll teach you how to continue to produce true lasting change in your life with biblical principles and with a loving relationship with the Lord. God bless you.